It's Monday, the 7th of May, 2018, and this is your EV News Daily. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you're listening around the world, a very warm welcome from London in the UK, where it's a bank holiday day today, a free day off work, and it's sunny. What's going on? Uh, Here is today's news about electric cars and the future of transport. My name is Martin Lee. And I go through every EV article online so you don't have to. Coming up on the show today, Nissan's job fears as they put the brakes on diesel. And Audi's beta website accidentally reveals some more details about their upcoming Quattro. But first of all, you may know that in March, Norway reported a 56% stat that all new cars sold were EVs. And then on yesterday's show, we updated April's figures. It was down slightly below 50%, but still very respectable. However, one consequence is that Norway, that little drop they had in April, is no longer Europe's number one for EV sales. So who is? Well, that honour goes to the home of diesel makers. Yeah, Germany. Carbuzz reports that EV sales increased 70% in the first quarter of the year for a total in Germany of 17,574 EVs sold. Important to note, however, that figure is not only pure BEVs, but also plug-in hybrids as well. Uh, Two of the most popular EVs in Germany are the BMW i3 and the Nissan Leaf. The BMW 2 Series plug-in hybrid, which isn't sold in North America, is a pretty common sight. Norway, however, does remain Tesla's third biggest market after the US and after China. Well, whilst I always want this show to be about how you and I are interested in electrifying transport, sometimes about the industry around it as well, like solar and charging and things like that, EVs, of course, don't exist in a vacuum. And that means that when they're on the rise, chances are something else might be in decline. And that's the case with diesel. It was never a big deal in the USA. Um, Had a bit of a rise and then a fall and then it never really caught on uh, with normal kind of car size transport. Diesel was never a big deal like it was in Europe. It quickly rose in the last 15 years or so to at least a 50% market share. As many governments saw diesel as a way to hit their targets for reducing CO2 and they kind of conveniently ignored, ignored NOx and nitrous oxides which turned out to be hugely bad news for air quality, uh, which was never really front and centre 15, 20 years ago by the scientists. Some countries as well, like France and Italy and Germany, had far larger market shares than 50%. Well, now that's all changing. Uh, Many of those market shares have just fallen off a cliff. And in a report in The Telegraph over the weekend, it said that Nissan will not put diesel engines in future models of its car, as Nissan is desperate to adapt to this sharp decline in diesel vehicle sales. Well, Japan's national public broadcaster is called NHK, and they reported that Nissan will stop selling diesel in Europe as part of its aim to sell a million EVs by 2020. A Nissan spokesman could not be reached for comment. Well, car industry figures have blamed the government for demonising diesel, which is a headline which seems to have caught on, if only for its alliteration, if nothing else, uh, which has resulted in the sales of uh, cars in the UK nosediving. Uh, New car sales in the UK rebounded a little bit in April after a year-long slump. Diesel sales, however, even in a month that was a relatively good month, Diesel was still down. A 25% year-on-year drop. Diesel's market share last month fell from 45 to 31%. It's an insane drop. Largely brought about by the car industry itself and telling a few fibs. Also by people's increased attention to the environment, to public health, to air quality, to the increasing attraction of EVs, um, becoming way more mainstream with those big YouTube channels like uh, Robert Llewellyn's Fully Charged, which is 
just getting hundreds of thousands of views and really crossing into the public consciousness as well. All of those things combined. Can you imagine the headache for car dealers that have tooled factories, have all their supply chains set up and just have diesel upon diesel car they just can't sell? They should make some more EVs, you know. Well, moving on, and one of the team behind the Fully Charged channel I just mentioned, uh, who goes by the name of Fully Charged Dan on YouTube these days, on Twitter, uh, rather, uh, he found the beta site for the new Audi e-tron Quattro, and the beta site had been put live. And he spotted this. Well, here are the highlights. Uh, the Audi e-tron Quattro will arrive early 2019 so even though the cars look pretty finished another six months to wait more than that 370 kilowatts of power and range well that's 310 miles of range from the 95 kilowatt hour battery and this is the interesting thing integrated solar cells in the roof of the new audi they'll generate electricity for the air conditioning and the heated seats so in the summer you get in the car and it's cool and it hasn't used the battery pack because it's been using the solar from the roof and in the winter the opposite the seats are warm also 80 percent charge in just 30 minutes and the phrase they used is this it'll be a thrilling experience if you're only used to combustion power and they use that in the context of talking about the instantness of the power and obviously the uh, the the copy is written by marketing experts and all those things and clearly the thing they think is going to convert combustion drivers to ev drivers in the kind of price range that the audi is going to sell for is the performance and when you first drive an ev and you put your foot down and you go that's the thing they're selling to audi drivers well staying with high performance cars and they verge the verge website have a really interesting article you should go and read it about the porsche cayenne e-hybrid uh, we'll link to it in the show notes they point out how important this one particular model is to the future of porsche and of course porsche have been working on the mission e for a long time and it's it's nearly ready they say that in addition to all of the weight savings introduced on the new cayenne e-hybrid uh, the plug-in hybrid version of it is going to boast this new technology like the new trio of digital displays in the dashboard super high tech you're going to get your driving information the navigation an off-road app as well uh, energy and efficiency displays as well on the new Porsche, also as part of the e-hybrid package. And they say that the SUVs that Porsche sell, way more so than the pure electric that's coming, the SUVs like the Cayenne they sell, the fact they're electrifying it is actually more important than anything else they're doing. Starting price for the e-hybrid Cayenne is $79,990 US dollars, and it's going to be an important car. Not for the masses, it's not a $35,000 Model 3, but it's an important car for Porsche. There are other, there are other less expensive plug-in SUVs as The Verge points out, but for Porsche's reputation as an EV manufacturer, it's the way that most customers will experience the technology. And I agree with that. Plug-in hybrids, for many people, will be the gateway drug to full electric. And let's stay with that. Let's stay with how, if you are down the pub this bank holiday, if you are talking to your friends, if you are chatting to people at work sometime this week, or in the next few weeks and months, about why they should get an electrified car, it might be easier to persuade them to get a plug-in, one that does lots of miles. Obviously, a pure Bev will suit most people, but for that first electric car they buy, maybe it should be a plug-in. And I'll tell you why. Uh, Douglas May on Talk News really nailed the case very succinctly by saying that uh, for those of us who actually own EVs, uh, we quickly realised that long electric ranges aren't that necessary because your house is your gas station. You plug it in every night, you charge the battery. In fact, all you really need, all you really need is a battery to do your daily commute. For most people, that is 20 to 50 miles, according to the research, 
and it'll do you just fine. The best way to describe a plug-in hybrid is electricity will cover your Monday to Friday and gas will cover the occasional long journey. Uh, well, this combination makes sense for two reasons. Firstly, lithium-ion batteries are super heavy. We know that, right? Tesla's battery weighs... 1200 pounds in the model s and you're only using maybe 10 to 15 percent of that on a daily commute for most we're talking for most people here right there's always going to be outliers for most people daily commute you're carrying all that weight for 50 miles the second reason is those that make infrequent weekend getaways for now for the next couple of years and bear with me on this for the next few years filling up at a gas station is still more convenient than waiting at a charging station. And I know that's going to be a bit offensive to the hardcore EV nuts out there, right? But for the next couple of years, for the people who you meet who are the doubters, who say, I won't buy one, right? If you can persuade them to a plug-in, the gateway drug, they'll soon learn that EV power is so nice to drive with, that it's so cheap that you get in every morning and it's fully charged, and that at the weekend, okay, you did a long journey, you filled up at a gas station, that might be less resistance from them. Uh, when those Model 3s become popular, though, uh, lineups at the uh, supercharging stations are going to be like slightly more common. There's going to be more queues, and with a plug-in, you can say to those people who you are convincing uh, sometime soon, Hey, look, you know, you're not used to queuing at the gas station, so you won't have to worry about it. Well, I would love to spread the word about electric cars. And if you can, I'd love you to share this online with one person who might be interested. You can listen to every previous episode of the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, TuneIn, Stitcher, iHeartRadio have added us to their podcast channel. SoundCloud's on there as well now. And of course, the blog at evnewsdaily.com. Remember to subscribe, so that means you haven't got to think about downloading it because you're going to get it first and free and automatically. And if you could rate and review, that'd be great. Uh, say hi on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter uh, to start your week. If you are online, search EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you tomorrow.